Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we're gonna be talking about the NoCo Genius GB70. So this jump pack is actually meant to supplement one of the big giant jump packs, which I have right here. You can see this giant thing versus this little considerably lighter jump pack. Not only is this a smaller, more compact setup, it's actually a lot safer. This has circuitry built into it to prevent you from doing something really dumb, which we'll talk about in just a minute. In the box of the GB70, you of course get the jump pack. You also get a series of different cables. You get the charge cable, you get a cable to plug the jump pack into your vehicle to charge it, as well as a cable to plug other 12 volt accessories to run off of the jump pack. And you get a nice carrying case to put it all in. This is a 2000 amp lithium ion battery. It's rated for a gas engine up to eight liters and a diesel engine up to six liters. On the side here, we have two separate ports. We have an in and an out. This has a 2.1 amp USB out as well as a 12 volt 15 amp out. We have a 2.1 amp micro USB in as well as a 12 volt 3 amp in for a fast charge. So this is the one you'd plug into your vehicle to get a really fast charge. It also has a seven mode LED light, which is pretty bright, as well as different flashes for SOS, things like that. So a really nice addition to a jump pack, something again that a big jump box won't generally have. It also has a one year manufacturer's warranty. Now, I've had this for a little while and I was waiting to do a review until I could get some time with it. I didn't wanna just basically do a glorified unboxing. I think that would have been a little bit of a disservice to you guys to just show you what's in the box, say it's great, and move on to the next review. So before I show you guys this in action, let's talk about some of the things I really liked and some of the things that I think can use some improvement. Some of the things I like is that it's small. We saw compared to the other jump box, how small this is and how lightweight it is compared to that big jump box. It also works really well. I was able to jumpstart about 10 cars on this without having to charge it. In fact, there was only one car that I tried to jumpstart that I couldn't start with this. And the reason I couldn't start that was because the fuel pump was not plugged in. So I don't think that's very fair to this jump pack to say it would not start it because, well, it would have never started anyway. I love the light. You know, you guys know how I am about my flashlights. I love the light on the end. I think it's great. You know, imagine being in the dark in a parking lot or something, having to jump start your car. This is going to come in handy big time. One of my favorite things about this though, and this is really the reason I think to have something like this over that big jump box is that it's safe. I have seen in my career multiple vehicles jump started backwards. The negative was put to the positive terminal of the battery, the positive was put to the negative, and bad, bad things ensue. In fact, we've had a salesman do that twice which cost an ECM in each case. One was a CC, the other, I believe, was a GLI. I've had technicians do it where it cost us an ECM. I have seen a Phaeton totaled because someone jump-started the convenience battery, which would be the wrong battery, backwards, and it melted the harness just in front of the taillight. The only way to get that straightened out is to either do like an 80 wire wiring repair or put a body harness in it, and of course, that cost to replace the body harness exceeded the value of the vehicle. Therefore, we had one total Phaeton due to someone simply, instead of doing this, they did this. In fact, our sales department is going to be buying these so that that kind of thing never happens to them again. You know, we as technicians sort of take for granted doing this kind of thing, and it's really easy to do. You're not paying attention or, you know, your mind wanders, whatever. And I've seen a lot of vehicles jump started backwards. So to have circuitry inside of one of these to prevent that reverse polarity is a huge, huge, huge advantage. You know, this comes in at about 200 bucks. I can tell you that an ECM on most modern cars, at least Volkswagens anyway, generally doesn't cost less than about 900 bucks. Now, there's a few things in a perfect world I would really like to change. One of those things is that it's slow to charge on the port when you plug it directly into the wall. 
With the micro USB, you know, the cool thing is, is that's the same charger as my old Samsung phone, but it takes a really long time, generally a full day. I don't have the by the book number of how long it took to charge this, but I can tell you that it took a really long time. To overcome that, you can use the other one and charge it with the 12 volt outlet in your vehicle, and it's supposed to charge it considerably faster. The other thing that I think would be really beneficial to this jump pack is if the cables were just a little bit longer. You'll see in some of the videos that I struggle because these cables are really only about 10 inches. And there are some vehicles, especially some Volkswagens, that that's just not enough room to really get on the battery and have this in a good position to monitor it. The other thing is the clamps are a bit bulky. If you guys work on batteries in really tight locations, you'll see how big this is. This is a bit bulky in order to really get it down and get it a good connection on the battery, especially like Volkswagen Beetles on the negative post. This is a little bit bulky. You can do it and it'll work. It's just a little bit tricky to get a good, really solid chomping bite on it in order to make it work. I will also say that the directions aren't the greatest. I think, uh, you know, it comes with this little tiny instruction book in a million and a half languages. Uh, I think the directions could use a little bit of tuning up. It's not that big of a deal. It's a very, very minor thing. I just wasn't super impressed with the instructions that it came with. All right, so let's take a look at this thing in action. I shot a handful of different videos with this. Let's start off with the last one that I, I shot. This is a time lapse of over about a minute. On the first go around, the car actually didn't start. This is a diesel, a common rail diesel Jetta. We'll call it a Jetta. And we tried to jump start it, you know, pretty much instantly, and it didn't start right away. We had to let it sit for again a total of about a minute before the car would finally start. Here's another vehicle. This looks like a 2.5 liter that we went ahead and used this on to jump start the this old Duralast battery. You see me here kind of struggle with with the shortness of the cables. Actually, if the whole device was sort of flipped the other way, this probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. So you can see here, I finally got it set right. It's a little bit weird to try and film it, but you know, most of the time when people are using this, they're not going to be trying to take video of this device in action. And this one fired up right away. Here's where I wanted to put my multimeter on the battery while I was using the jump start pack. This is the vehicle that actually didn't have the fuel pump hooked up, so it would have never started. We're looking at starting with a battery at about five volts. You can see it slowly jump up. The total time of this video was about seven minutes. Some of that was me cranking it, but you can see eventually it'll get the voltage up to nearly 11 and a half, just at right at 11 and a half volts. This battery was super dead. This car sat for a couple of years. So I'm not surprised that it wasn't able to bring it all the way up to a good strong battery voltage. You can see here, I tried it on multiple different vehicles, different battery setups, and it was able to start each one every time, again, other than that one that would have never started to begin with. Now, I've only charged this a total of two times. I charged it initially out of the box, and then I charged it after that one vehicle that wouldn't start completely drained it. Again, that would have never started, so I'm not surprised that it totally drained this jump pack. And after doing that and jump starting several cars with it, we still have quite a bit of a charge left. We're still at 75%. Now you'll notice this emergency button here. If the battery's below two volts, this will bypass some of the safety and it'll charge it kind of full throttle as best that it can do. For the average customer, for the average vehicle owner, I think this one might actually be a little bit overkill. NOCO does make other ones, they make smaller ones that work pretty well. Uh, we actually tried this one versus another one and I wasn't able to get video of it versus the smaller one. The smaller one wouldn't start it and this one would. So, you know, it, it, you gotta weigh the odds at 100 bucks, are you gonna be okay with the smaller one? Or at 200 bucks, are you gonna be better off with this one? Obviously, if budget's not a problem, you wanna get the biggest, best one that you can buy. But in like a shop setting or a place where there's a lot of cars, a used car lot, like I mentioned, our sales department's gonna be switching over to these. Get the biggest one you can, and I think this one is a perfect one for that. And you know, 200 bucks sounds like a lot of money, but those big jump packs, are about that price or more anyway. So I don't really think that the price point of this is really out of the ballpark for what you're getting. 
because this one again will also run 12 volt accessories as well. It's got the USB plug, so if you need to charge your cell phone, it'll charge it like a million and a half times. Uh, this is an awful big battery backup for your cell phone. So again, it's just one extra thing to have, and it does a little bit more than the standard jump pack will. I've also tried some other different versions of something similar to this. Uh, some branded by big name tool companies, and they all work okay. I've seen the cables on the other ones get hot and the cables actually melt a little bit. This at least, even though they're short, they are nice heavy duty cables. So I'm a fan, this one is probably going to be living in the Passat uh, or the GTI, depending on which one I'm driving day to day. The Tiguan's pretty new, so I'm not gonna put it in there. It is something that, you know, it's expensive, but if it can save you a tow bill, or save you from being stranded, it's going to be worth it. Again, like I mentioned, there are other ones. This is sort of like one down from the biggest one that they sell. There is smaller ones down the line. They start at like 70 bucks or something like that and go all the way up from there. Again, this one comes in right at 199 on Amazon. And as always, I'll be sure to put links in the show notes, in the video notes for you guys to check it out if you'd like. I'll also link up to the NOCO website if you wanna check out any of those specs that I mentioned earlier in the video. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously right here on YouTube. Again, links down in the video notes for you guys to check this out. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. So this is an old battery out of my Cabrio. And, uh, you know, just for fun, I kind of think I want to hook it up and see what happens when we actually hook this up reverse. I'm going to turn it off, hook the positive to the negative, negative to the positive, and you'll notice right away that the light comes on saying that I got something wrong. And I can turn it on, no sparks, obviously it's not hooked up, so no fried ECM but it immediately gives you a warning that, hey, something's not right. As you can see, we are just over six volts. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Watch our voltage jump right up. This is still a little bit light to start a battery, so this would probably have to sit on the battery for quite some time, maybe three or four minutes, before we got the voltage high enough in order to start the car.